two teams have eclipsed the 40 Elim mark. That's going to be Team Biffle with 42 and Team Unrational with 42. And you did some math coming into this, and you said that every elimination for SSD was worth around 1.8. Right now, they're sitting at 1.68 for that average. Yeah, they've had a lot. It really was that last map that ruined that average. They had a pretty solid first two maps, didn't end up winning those maps. But the third map, they went out very early comparatively. Now, they're probably totally fine to make grand finals, but they're not dominating like we thought. The team on our screen, definitely one I'm worried about. Down into about 20th place right now with only 24 points. Things are not going their way. And speaking about, we talk about pressure making diamonds. The amount of pressure that is on the back of this team right now is nearly insurmountable they are in the 33rd with like 14 points in total and it's because of this right here they are being contested and they are losing almost every single time at the beginning of the map watch out for that team that is by the way number three and number six most earned warzone players of all time the young guns here to slay and speaking of the young guns on your screen right now squad 16 in a bit of trouble yeah and just consistently running into early game issues it's gonna be the squad aside them right swish them on the high ground looking for angles here on greb greb rechals hits the crack on the swish but when you've got only two players left i'd be imagined that sin's gonna look to try and get back towards the team reunite all three back on their feet Foulnets and nico not able to get alongside swish but swish shouts swish takes out greb and the action just keeps coming okay swish Swiss with the chow, and unfortunately, the follow-up doesn't get there quite in time to save her life, but still an overall team victory. Shout-out to that Kruger squad. A fun storyline for them. I hope they can make global finals. Kruger actually is born in Saudi Arabia, the only uh, Middle Eastern team player that is actually in North America competing. So we'll see if maybe he can win this Gulag. A bit of revenge. Uh, Swish and versus Kruger fell into the Gulag at the same time, which means they got mashed up together. Let's see if Swish gets him again. No, the ants are back. A little bit of revenge tour for Mr. Kruger. You love to see that, honestly. Just her switching the weapons and looking at the right, thinking that they were going to approach from that oh, angle. No. Krug just had a better read. But Aiden, oh, no. DJ Moss, Z Smith on the screen. You were talking about Team Almond Oof. having issues early on. And there goes the interrogation straight on his skull face, giving up the location of the remaining two members. And now we just got to cross the road and get on over to them. Almond on the roof already looking for angles, but the smoke for Aiden is already prepped to cross the open area. Aiden knows who this team is. He got the knock on Skullface. He knows that they're down in numbers. This is a must win fight. Almond has the most wanted. He does answer back and drops one. DJ now trying to clean up the mess. Does get it. DJ get the cleanup. Most wanted. They get the cash. Almond's team still in trouble. No free buybacks, but they get one back into the mix. Noobs down on the ground. One floating. Skullface trying to get comms. Noobs in trouble though, because this is going to be a 2v3 potential if they can get this res, which they do. Yeah, this is nice. Now they can just send every Ooh. bit of resources over to noobs who came oh. through. Z Smith up the zip, and albeit we do not have one of them fooled, we preserve the life there. This is just sad. It, and frankly, I didn't think Aiden's team was doing all that well. We haven't seen them a ton on broadcast. And they look at the leaderboard, they're top 10. I mean, they're not doing incredible necessarily, but still definitely in contention to make global finals. This squad, th this is frankly a must win. They need all of this cash to make sure they can get a loadout and restabilize with plates and everything they need, armor boxes. They need all of this money. So they need to win this Gulag, get their three kills, and then move on their merry way. And frankly, three kills for them if they all win their Gulag, which I think they might have is like a third of their total points in the last three maps well here's one of your bubble teams running into some issues early brax in the gulag tenix on the other side grabbing cash moving up throws the smoke and reads it with the lethal as soon as they hit the rotate doesn't connect but this oh. is a very aggressive gulag resulting in some hip fire and now prone there goes the zip but okay brax <laughs> So, that was clean. Sometimes Warzone's a little bit of a jump scare. I mean, he swings around, all of a sudden the guy's right next to him. He just doesn't even notice where he's at because Brax is prone down on the ground. Very, very clean. Great call. Uh, but we continue to swing around to some of these early gunfights because this is where teams need to start making their tournament life 
possible. Everyone heads to LCQ. Nobody's eliminated in this stage, but you don't want to have to go to LCQ. Only the top four make it out of LCQs. And then we have that wild card final map where the winner of that map makes it. So five in total out of all 40 teams that will be there. You want to make global finals right here, right now. Don't leave it up to razor thin margins. Adrian Sage, Swag, solid tournament thus far. They really know they can do better, so they want to double down on that, but they are top 10 right now, so if they keep up this pace, they should be fine. And unfortunately, Clown comes in to try to play spoiler and takes one out. Oh, and a swing around, grabs another knock. Adrian in the gulag here against Unrational on the other side. Not where you want to see Unrational and knowing just how many frags he's been able to pick up throughout this tournament. This is going to be a heated 1v1. Adrian, though, Oof. takes off the armor, takes the win, and gets back to Urzikstan. These are huge moments. I mean, frankly, I love watching Gulas because of the 1v1s, and Sage just does not get the right end of that timing. Nate Dog right back into the mix. Sage waiting on a buyback. Gulags are really fun because they're 1v1s, really just use whatever's on the map utility-wise to win it, but also it totally dictates how you regain getting back into the map, what, how much cash you have. So you don't want to be sent there, but when you do, winning is so crucial to your team's success and the ability to find your feet on the map. Shroy is having to run away from the squad, waiting on Nate Dog to come back in after winning that Gulag we talked about. And Exact's team just can't quite send it the way they would like to to clean up this team. And now they're on the hunt. Just went a hair too late. I think they were a bit worried that Destroy was able to ISO a couple of these fights when Sip Rep so kind of isolated. And well, there's the third party and OP Mark's team finally getting into the mix, a couple of eliminations. Yeah, this was originally a very high stakes fight. One squad in 11th place, Destroy squad in 15th. So now that Destroy and them get Nate Dog back, they can reposition just further on the outskirts of Low Town. But with OP marked entering the, the fray over here, I'm a little worried. Now granted, this squad has not been performing to the nature that we witnessed in that lower round two. Now granted, a much higher skilled lobby but when you can't really get things moving on the rotations it doesn't matter so many players that we've talked to after their match wins it's focus on your positioning let those kills come to you and if we're rotating through low town knowing there's a large majority of teams here things are going to get mixy quick yeah for op mark's team this is feeling probably like quite a bit of deja vu this is about where they were at during the upper bracket i believe they got 37th in the upper bracket and they're in 35th right now so whatever success they found in the lower bracket round two apparently not coming their way here in our regional finals but last match winner is looking fairly stable and well staring down the barrel of one of the top teams over on the other side you see shifty very aggressively split from his duo likely looting up and making sure they clear out the poi but Frolic with a couple pot shots. I think both teams know where each other are. And a quick look at the zone here. This makes a lot of wow. sense. Look at where they're at. They're in Popov, but the zone is that northern, northeastern side military base in the zone we've seen now a couple times. Hear me out, guys. Y'all should have VOD reviewed everything that we witnessed throughout the week because we have so many similarities for our end games. And knowing that SSD does learn power, they've made their way up onto the industrial side of things, but they still have that northern bridge and a zip to be able to cross the water with ease. However, there are already teams that have moved into the northern side of military base. So if I'm, you know, Huskers and Co., I don't really want to rotate through SSD. I'm yeah. going to hang it back and try to go south, but there's already teams there. Yeah, Shifty is just sprinting at this team. I think that is a perfect call tip. This team does not need to worry about SSD. They don't need to fight them. They're just trying to get top 12. It's what we said at the very top of the show. Just top 12 is all you need. It looks like this squad has actually grabbed the train and they're just sending it around the map on the train potentially, or at the very least use the buy on the train and then maybe you're hoofing it on foot. But coming in late, SSD gets the comms from Ahsoka. There's another team here, needs some help. Biffle trying to play spoiler is able to grab a couple. SSD on the hunt, finding kill after kill, breaking JTEC's team apart one by one. Oh, that is so unfortunate for JTEC, B-Mark, and Slide. 
but it gives Huskers a chance to rotate around SSD. They're not going to be able to get south, so they just go north after that fight. But the thing is, Shifty is so hyper aggressive. We already talked about this squad and the ability to grab those eliminations north of 40, one of only two squads to do so just yet. And Shifty's got one <laughs> with a thousand damage. You're not going to be happy with that elim oh, damage gosh. average. So we are on pursuit. The chase is real. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's exactly what Husker should have done. And Ahsoka read them perfectly. Had info, likely some UAVs or otherwise, spotted them out. They are not letting any free rotations come through because for a team like the Falcons, the SSD in front of you, they're not chalking their game taking this fight. They've done this a thousand times. They're the best team on the map. They've got confidence. They're going to go for it. And then when they see that it's not a fight that they think they can take, they back off. And what's fun about this is Shifty is hunting them like a predator on prey. Look at this. Every single time they have a trap set up and Huskers is able to evade it, Shifty just tucks in behind them and hunts them down. He knows they're trying to rotate to zone and, well, looks like somebody's shooting back or maybe a mortar to the face will make him think twice about it. Shifty throws the plates in and continues his hunt. Not sure what they're locked in for weapons here, but in the last map they won, Huskers and Brolic were both running the car 98. Oh gosh. And a weapon, but Shifty just keeps getting closer, keeps taking space. And the fact that we're living under the bridge, cutting off those eye lines, and still calls in a streak to maneuver under that guise of cover. We're just waiting for Biffle and Soka on the opposing side. Now, of course, they're going to dodge this, but it's going to put them right where Shifty wants them. If it wasn't SSD, I would say this is such an ego play that I don't like it at all. Husker's team has the much better position. They've got high ground. They got here first. They didn't lose a player to it. Brolic's on top of the bridge. And now our Falcons are trapped under the bridge. They can't fly. They can't go anywhere. Look who coming in for a third party potentially. That's Sage and Adrian, another top team. These are the battle of the top teams. They are trying to chalk each other's games. And now Brolic up above gets absolutely ripped. Falcons will not fall. Shifty on one HP in a dream, but they can't jump over the wall. They can't drop down to fight this. The Falcons hang on by a breath. This is a ridiculous gunfight here in the fourth circle. There's a one thing that we love to say when it comes to teams like the Falcons, formerly known as SSD, is that they just get granted plot armor. And for them to not no lose way. Shifty at that point is crazy to me. In no way, shape, or form should he have not at least gotten knocked. But Huskers, Jackal, Brolic, time is of the essence. That circle four is going to close in less than eight seconds. So they're going for that rotation, considering it pulls all the way towards the eastern side of military base and top teams have already made it over there. So we're not going to have the easiest of rotations, but something that they're doing is they're looking for the buy station and the redeploy to really bolster that rotate. And that's crazy that they get it for free. Oh man, we could have stayed on that perspective the entire map, but we're missing a lot of war zones. So we're going to go check out some other matchups and a team desperately needing something from this map in dire straits. Lovey has made it out, so at least they'll have one alive. But Clutchbox team, a team, they said there's no way they should have been in the lower bracket. And a lot of people agreed this is a strong squad, but they struggled. And then finally in the lower bracket round two, they had a decent round, but it wasn't anything to write home about. And now back into this regional finals, they're getting dumpstered. I mean, we are way down the leaderboard right now. We've got to make a move. And now that they've got all three up on the out of bounds line, this is a great rotation from Clutchbuck to stay alive. The question is, where do you go from here? There's not a ton of cover and there's two teams staring at you. And as you lose one, now you're in deep trouble. Yeah, sometimes you just got to pull that out of bounds play to try and stay out of the cover from Levi, Limax and Zeppa. But for now, down to a duo. This squad came into this map in 17th place. So you're right. We've still got to move the margins by five total placements on the back half of this series. But we see a mobile buy station, which could be the answer to our problems. We just got to take down Rias first. I would love a knock here. Belk is traditionally a very strong sniper. The shot's just not hitting currently. Warning shots and plenty of ammo. Just keep throwing them down once they hit. 
to be a massive boon and thinks better of that advance all by himself. Got a PDS out in the storm as Lovey gets an aerial view overhead. Something teams oftentimes do. This is really an important map for this team and a track just got caught unaware with PDS right behind you. You've got to know this is here and I think they just got distracted by this other team. Riaz though enacts his revenge. Clutchbuck falls. We'll have one floater. We'll see if they're able to stabilize later. All of a sudden moving into the fifth circle here. Things about to get real hairy for a team in 20th going into this map. Team Tommy got to make a move. Seems like they have a sizable amount of kills and all three up. This could be their map to get right back into contention for global finals. Everything's happening on the southwestern side, but you can see just above that north side of the map is controlled by SSD. Zeppa's team is the only one further outside. The fact that they got that rotation off and are going to be able to clear out the north side is wild because everyone is here between the southwest. And Tommy needs all these eliminations. But Husker's team, who was previously rotating alongside SSD, has found themselves in this cluster. Yeah, and this is the death rotate. I mean, speaking of where the zone is, there's only a couple teams there like you were breaking down this squad has a ton of teams to work through it is going to be a very tall task to, to get to this next zone fully alive if they can do it if they can all three stay up i think there's a chance they can win this map i think there's a chance they can get themselves very close to qualifying for regional uh rather global finals they're here in regionals and they are in trouble a team behind them riaz in trouble raul there destroy right behind this is like back and forth we've seen now a couple times over the last couple maps of destroy versus tommy two stalwarts in the scene battling each other for position jockeying on the leaderboard both need it bad tommy's got maybe a hair better of a position but just a hair because there's a couple teams lurking off in the distance yeah, but Destroy Squad's only in 14th place, so we're not where we want to be. So two teams on the outside looking in, quite literally outside of circle, outside of the top 12. And honestly, if they're all going to line up like that, maybe OBS is just going to hit a collapse. <laughs> that would have been wild, but not going to happen. Here goes the recon, though. I like that. Oh, did he lose Debate it? Gets, gets denied. Yeah, immediately. Rudy on the opposing squad. The PDS has to come out, but we don't have much cover to work with. I was going to say, I love the idea there. You can leave it up and check back in with it if they don't shoot it down immediately, but just obliterated instantly as the zone comes in. Wasn't thinking straight. Maybe didn't get inside the PDS. I'm not sure because the PDS thrown after, but recon drone gone and having to rotate. Here oh. comes the death rotation. They have this interesting tiny little lip they're playing with. I don't know if they know Raid is up here. It doesn't look like it. Finally showing their shoulder to Mayapo and Raided. A very weird sight to see Mayapo on zero eliminations, but Prospect now making it two. Tommy, they needed all three alive to have any chance going into this final circle, and they might lose their entire team to Team Raided, who's been lurking on high ground, lurking in the shadows, eliminating teams as they rotate in. This is why we say rotate early team Tommy just couldn't get there in time and now the owner's responsibility to have a life point in this tournament is entirely on the back of OBS he's got to make a heroic play to get the zone and then just hold out for placement they've got a sizable amount of kills they've got probably close to double digit kills they got about that 9 10 that Dandro has been talking about but you got to get to top 10 to make it pay and you can see Lovey trying to do a lot of the same that's a player on clutch belts team from before we were talking about everybody just holding on for dear life and as a full team of three swings around that is safe making quick work of Team Tommy. They are out of here. We were talking about the Hunters, but the real Hunters of that lobby were going to be Sage, Adrian, Swag. The way they just ripped apart Team Raided, ripped apart the opposing squad, and now Jackal will fall. Huskers will be no more thanks to Foreign Jace, Jowo, and Bredman, who have regained that position. Shero, Devo, Von Bot making a PDS play, chaining them together, trying to not get to zone quite yet because of the utter chaos that is occurring on the outside. This is a massive game for Team Joe. It has not gone their way in the first three maps. They were around 18th or so. They need a big one here and they are here. But there's another Joe looking around the corner. It's big Joe Gang going massive, wiping Von Bot. Shira, last alive for that team. Joe Gang says, I'm not going down without a fight. I need this. I want this. And I will show Ebates that he's always been wrong about us. Dominating right now here on the outer edge of zone if they can clean up Shero and they can clean up it looks like blast by himself above they actually should have a fairly free rotate if they go to the north hand side they're gonna have to contest ssd though going into this next zone it's gonna be a tall tall task but we're into the final five they got there they got their multiplier aiden all three alive looking for an opportunity to make top five and have done it with their multipliers and now they're just gonna lurk in the shadows and likely pds here and wait to see if they can make a third party play to win it all
When you think of the teams that are left in the lobby, now that we're in top five, that can contend with SSD, this would be one of them. But Shifty has already ripped through Z Smith. So then we look towards our left. We have Team Jobo sitting in 18th place. Needs a banger game, but for now, Aiden oh. goes for another PDS. Looks for any kind of loot that we can find, but look who gets ripped on the rotate. Can we stick the res? 10 seconds to go and it doesn't even matter. We've seen crazy gas plays coming out of SSD, and this would be none other. Looking for their first map win. They hailed from the north, clearing it out from Team Zeppa, and just kept on waltzing in. There goes wow. Blast, the knock comes through, and now we can start focusing the other squads. But look at that massive rotate from Squad 39, Joe Gang. Joe Gang's team wiped Joe Wo's squad, and they won the full team of three with all three up, but finally, Hasoka finds a pick, and executes on it. Aiden dies to gas. All of a sudden, it's Joe Gang versus Shifty. And when you have player advantage, you have the storm. It was inevitable. The Falcons will fly and they finally get their map win we've been waiting for. The big question in my mind, Tip, as per the usual, is this time, how many kills did they net along the way? What was the final score for the first 2x multiplier they were able to take home? We're just going to have to 